um, myself, Daniel Partridge, and Ed Neggs will be presenting um, just some of the components regarding the fast track and some installation tips and practices, um, followed by um, just a brief summary of the presentation. Um, so starting right off, um, what I will ask is talking to uh, regards to Cameron and questions that may arise during the presentation. Um, we all have everyone on mute at the moment. So if you do have any questions, feel, please feel free to type them into the chat window in the bottom of your uh, webinar screen, and Cameron will address them to me as we go along. Uh, thanks again for attending, and we'll get started. So during this presentation, again, we're going to be covering uh, just basics about the fast track system, system components. We'll go through this with band tables and some typical layouts, then installation tips and best practices. Um, fast rack was originally put together a couple years ago um, with the heavy duty rail has since gone to a low profile rail which is a bit lighter and a little bit more com useful for residential applications so we now have a system that's good for both commercial and residential um, big benefits with the fast rack rails are being able to use larger spans between your mounting mounting feet thereby reducing your installation time <coughs> Pardon me. To further make life easy for our installers, we've also chosen four distinct lengths of rail, a 7-foot, 10-foot, a 13, and a 20-foot rail, uh, which line up with two, three, four, and six panels, respectively. Um, with these, we've pretty much made the fast rack the backbone of all of our 60 and 72 cell panel systems. So starting out, the uh, Fast Track HD, the original rail that we were talking about, um, designed predominantly for commercial applications, putting on barns and larger, uh, larger installs, where a typical 42-inch span uh, was not sufficient. We needed a longer, more robust rail. Um, after that came out, a lot of installers seemed to uh, enjoyed it, enjoyed the fact that it was making their install life easier and wanted something a little bit lighter for residential applications, which is why we came up with the LP. Um, a slightly lighter rail, slightly less expensive, but also with that, we do trade off the, the maximum spans that can be, can be achieved. Um, further, furthermore, with the systems, we've also put together um, the L-foot. Our L-foot is designed to work in conjunction with the fast rack, low profile, and heavy duty rails for adjusting the height, um, height of the rails, which makes leveling your system easier during your install. Um, so if we start looking at some of the system components, starting off right from the basics, um, how are we attaching to our roofs? Right now, we have three major systems that we use. One is our flashing and leg screw method, typically used for asphalt shingled roofs, where we have our, uh, our flashing with a rubber sealing surface, compression plate, which mounts to our L foot, and then is lagged into place with a sealing washer. These are great in that um, you do have the flashing, helps reduce uh, water ingression into the roof, uh, and they're nice and quick and easy to install. Alternate method, commonly used more on the steel roofs, is our EJOT. The EJOT comes with, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it has a leg portion on the bottom with a machine thread at the top. The leg portion, of course, for securing to the trusses of your roof, and um, the machine thread for attaching to our L feet um, for holding the, the rail and panel system in place. Also with the EJOT is the a ceiling element as well for sealing to your metal surfaces, um, again, to prevent water penetration. Uh, last, uh, last mounting system that we currently have available is the use of the S5 clamps. These are tr traditionally used for standing seam roofs. Um, they're great. We do have a variety of, of S5 clamps available depending on your seam profile. We can work with that and, uh, and find you a solution that should fit your what your application needs. Eventually, and we are working on this, is finding a quick and uh, 
effective installation method for corrugated roofs. Right now we are using the eDrops and most applications will use them. But if your trapezoid profile or rolled corrugated profile um, is not sufficient to, for the eDrop, we are, again, we're searching for a viable solution for those applications. Getting into some system components now. So we've talked about the rails. Now we're talking about go looking at the clamps. Our end clamps. Our end clamps are designed based on specific to our, the different modules that HGS provides. Um, and so it is different. They are specific to uh, individual panels. These connect to our rails nice and easily with a T-bolt um, and, uh, and a flange nut. As you can see here, similar to ones that um, uh, to mo the to similar to systems most people are used to. I'll, next up is the mid clamp. Mid clamp, same idea as the end clamp. It is a T-bolt that fits into the slot in the top of the fast rack rail. We've also included a bonding washer uh, to the system. So what we'd be doing, tension is, is to bond the panel to the rail system. Uh, this, of course, will help uh, save installation time by not requiring people to bond uh, or installers to bond every panel to their individually. Continuing on with the bonding system, the lay-in lugs, similar idea, T-bolt, uh, bonding washer, and a lay-in lug. Uh, again, speeding up install time uh, and giving you a way to connect to your uh, to your bare copper wire to bring back to to bond back to your electrical panel. Uh, for systems that are larger than just the that two, three, four, or six that our typical rail lengths come in, we also have our splice kits. Uh, one for the LP, which slides nicely down the center of the rail, and similar one for the heavy duty rail. Uh, again, sliding down the center. These both come with their own um, bonding straps which, again, T-bolts in the slots and uh, bond your rails together. Added benefit of this is that it does allow you to space your rails a little bit of, a little bit of distance between them while keeping them aligned. This allows for future uh, thermal expansion, uh, depending on, on the temperature and the length of your system. Continuing on, so now that we've gone through the majority of the, uh, the major components of the system, I'm going to start looking at a typical system layout and how we would how we would start uh, putting a system together. Um, first thing we normally would do is a site visit. In this case, we've just grabbed a Google Earth image, but on site, typically a lot of people who've done the installations, you'll do a site visit. You'll collect your measurements, and it's important, obviously, to get accurate measurements. Find out where your roof obstructions are, and to make life easier in the future, lots of photos. Um, from all of this information you've collected, next step, of course, is to design a sketch. Figure out how, you know, where your panels are going to go, how they're going to be placed, and if you actually have enough room to get your array on the roof. After knowing how big your array is going to be, and <clears throat> pardon me, um, the, the size and dimension of your array, knowing your footprint, knowing how much, where it's going to sit, and um, and w where your panels are going to line up is going to save you a lot of time when you do eventually get to site to start your installation. Um, by knowing your offsets, by knowing the width of your whole array, um, will help you with figuring out where your mounting feet are going to be placed and where your rails are going to have to be situated. So next up, what we're going to be talking about is the span tables. The span tables, going back to what we were earlier mentioning regarding the HD rail and the low profile rail, Base determines how far you can put your mounting feet apart and still have your system adequately supported. So looking at a system and how we determine the span distances, um, important things to know would be the wind load and your wind speed for your, for your area. Using, example, using as an example a project we recently did in Vaughan, uh, and our national building codes, uh, we can determine how far apart our, our rails 
our mounting feet can be placed. So from a from a structural engineering analysis of the site, um, it was determined that the specified snow load for this building was 30.7 PSF and a wind load of 11.1. The uh, that 11.1 PSF, great number, but it doesn't mean a lot to too many people. Uh, knowing miles per hour is a little bit more, I guess, relevant and practical. Um, so we have designed the span tables for, with regards to miles per hour of, of, for wind. If you're trying to determine how to get from your PSF to miles per hour, um, div B wind effects in your building code actually has a walkthrough on that. Um, of course, other things to know about your roof is going to be what your roof is made out of, the slope of it, and where your trusses actually are. Uh, so with these values, um, we're going to continue on and take a look at an example of our span tables right here. This is for a 24-inch truss spacing, um, and we have said a 30.7. I just rounded down to 30 just as an example. The, these tables are quite conservative. Um, but I would suggest obviously not spanning more than one PSF. If you're if you're at 32 PSF, jump up to 40. But again, looking at the the table in the bottom right hand corner now, we've got the two layouts. One is for the EJOT, one is for the lag bolt. And again, we found most of the time the failure of the system is not going to be in the rail and span distances. It would be based on the pullout strength of the of your connection to the roof. Uh, which is why we have different tables for different fast different fasteners. Coincidentally, with this um, this project, regardless of whether it was an EJOT or a leg bolt, 72 inch spans were were what were, di were dictated. Again, this is with the low profile rail, not a heavy duty. Um, because that's a lot of information to to take in just one go, I'm going to walk through second another theoretical hypothetical system um, and just with a larger image make life easier hopefully for everyone. So this is what our spend tables typically will look like um, and if you had a site say in northern Ontario where you get a little bit more snow so you're at 45 PSF in snow load and quite windy at 140 miles per hour wind, uh, wind speeds, design wind speeds, um, let's take a look and see what we would find as far as um, as far as uh, what our spans would, would be capable of doing. So assuming a 612 pitch, just to, just on a number to work off of, and 24 inch on center metal roof. So metal roofs, that's where we're starting. To, we're using our EJOTs as opposed to the lag and the flashing. Uh, we're looking now at this section of the table right in the, uh, the center bottom. That section blown up to make it a little bit easier for us all to read. Um, we're now looking at this 45 PSF and this 140 mile per hour wind. 45 rounded up, we're at 50. And 40 mile per hour winds, this results in a span capable of 45 inches. Uh, not wanting to exceed that because then you are putting excessive loads on the rail and running the risk of, uh, uh, of damaging your, your, either your system um, or your panels. Or your, or your roof, sorry, pardon me. Um, so, using this 48-inch span, we're going to go back to the uh, that array layout we were looking at earlier, and in particularly the three panels that were at the top of that system, and looking at how we now would lay out our, our mounting feet. Um, knowing that 45 inches is our maximum, 48 inches, sorry, is our maximum span, uh, we have actually laid out a a W pattern or sawtooth pattern for the mounting feet. Benefit of this is actually so that you're getting on each truss, um, but while still reducing the number of, of, of penetrations needed on the roof. Um, for um, for people interested, we will be prov um, making available to uh, to our installers uh, layouts similar to this, which will actually show you your distances from center to the end of your rails and the end of your panels uh, to help you lay out your, your footprints of your system and give you ideas of where your, your mounting feet could go based on a 48-inch on-center uh, on center spans. At this point, um, I'll hand over the presentation to Ed to walk you through a typical installation, and then we will, I will 
come back in the end to do a bit of a summary for you. Thank you. And on to Ed. So now that you've uh, you've got your panel layout and you've got your span tables, all those tools, and, and we would help you with those if you're a first-time user or you can do it on your own, that's up to you. Um, but once you've got all that information, you're ready to place your order. So you just contact our sales department and they would put together all the parts and pieces you need to complete that layout. Once you have your parts arrive, you assemble all the tools required and go through everything. It's important to do a lot more work before you get to site. We know some installers work by actually just taking a bunch of parts to site and figuring it out as they get there. Um, you do waste a lot of time in doing that. It is better to do uh, a proper layout, have the layout done, and uh, make sure that you have all the parts, make sure that you have all the tools, do all these things before you even head out to site. There's this, um, Dan's going to go over this at the end, but there's huge uh, savings to be made by doing all this prep work. If you're at site and you find out, uh, you know, your shorter part or misordered or something like that, it's a pain to have to go back, get the new part, and then go back to site. Um, one of the benefits of fast track is is the the limited amount of tools that you do need. The main the main tool is is a, a 13 millimeter socket. Um, with that, um, you can complete all the different connections, all the different bolts. So that's your your main tool to have, and it's important that you have a no number of them on site, of course, in case you drop one off the roof or different people are doing different jobs. So uh, once you do get to site, um, you're first going to put your plan into action. You know, uh, you measure out the roof, you make a drawing, you do all that kind of stuff ahead of time, but you do want to make sure that uh, you've double checked it. So first thing to do is mark out the um, edges of the array, establish a staging area for all your materials so it's easier to get your materials up and down the roof. Another time-saving tip is, is some people make uh, rooftop toolboxes that sit on the ridge um, so that you can house a lot of your parts and a lot of your tools in a nice, easy-to-access location once you're up there so you're not running things up and down a ladder um, all day long or on a lift. Um, once you know that your array is going to fit, um, you can mark out um, where the rails are going to go. The next step is um, putting, uh, well actually this should have been previous to that of course, your safety plan, putting it into action. It's really, really important to have a safety plan. Um, we've recommended to people that you just make up one simple sheet and the sheet can just, you know, have the contact details of the customer contact details of, you know, the local um, emergency, hospital, all those kinds of things, so that everybody on site um, knows it. It's also good to get the customer to see that sheet. Um, you know, them seeing that you have a safety plan gives them a much better confidence level in you and just shows how professional you are and they're a little bit more relaxed and there's a good chance that they'll recommend you to their neighbor and so on and so forth. And that's actually how a lot of sales work, is through recommendations. <clears throat> um, if you're not uh, roof safety certified or fall safety certified, it's important to get that done. And it's quite easy to do. We can help you with that if you ever need. Just contact us and, you know, we can probably put you through one of our training courses um, that we do quite often. Also, a general electrical safety is now required in some provinces, and we do offer that as well. So once your safety plan is in place, the next step is is to um, start to locate the rafters. So you'll have your array outlined on the roof, but now you have to go and try and find out where the rafters are. Um, the best methods are, you know, either measuring from a known location. There are certain stud finders. Um, uh, a Bosch stud finder is one uh, we've used. It's the DTEC 100, and I think it's an older model number. I think there's an updated one. Um, once you've found all the studs, then you can um, put the flashings in place as to where your feet are going to go. Um, what we usually do is recommend that you just take the little flashing and tuck it under the shingle in a spot where you're going to put a fo uh, foot and put them all on the roof. What that does is that um, saves you some time 
by you can step back and, and look at where all the feet are going to go make sure that you have it done right so you don't go putting a foot in where you didn't need one also to make sure that you've ordered the right amount of parts you know all of a sudden you go stick all the flashings underneath the shingles in the spots they need to go and you're five short you know you misordered once you've done that then uh, you can go through um, verify where the stud is drill your pilot hole um, seal it put the flashing in and then mount your foot and then you're ready to move on to your rails putting your rails in place usually you start from the bottom and work up um, that's uh, important for a couple reasons uh, one of the main ones is that it's a steeper roof it always gives you something to um, <laughs> catch tools that drop or catch uh, onto if someone slips and stuff like that so it helps with safety um, as well as it, it makes the installation go a little bit smoother um, putting your rails in place is quite simple there's the L foot that will be attached with the flashing the rails will just sit on top of that and then there's a T bolt that bolts the rail onto the upper side of the L foot um, both the um, L foot and the rail have little adjustment grooves for those of you who have done installs and may have used other products um, adjusting the height needs to be done especially if you have multiple rows of modules you need to make sure that it's going to look good from the ground and sometimes the height of the roof is not always the same throughout so you have to adjust the height what fast track allows you to do is adjust that height one notch at a time um, so it helps a lot in, in leveling out the array and makes it a lot simpler and quicker um, so once your rails are all in position you put your rail bonding lugs on and run your wire into your junction box or whatever the case may be for your installation and that gets done and then you're ready to start installing the modules we start at the one end um, so you put the uh, first module on when you're aligning the modules um, there's no real way to level it and even if you leveled it um, um, square to what you think should be square it all depends on how the shingles are installed so we always say align it to the shingles as best you can you may have to adjust as you go um, there is room to make some shifting as you go from each module to each module to make sure you're in line aligning with the shingles what that does is it gives you the visual appeal that you're looking for from the ground and that's what's important here is when the customers looking from the ground up at their brand new array they want to see that it's in line uh, or square to them which will be aligning with the shingles so from each modules once you clamp the first one down you got to remember to connect it either to your microinverters or to connect the strings or to your optimizers whichever way you're using um, once those connections are done you can fasten the module in place then you put the clamps for the next module and get that module ready to be installed you keep repeating that process until you've got all the way to the end once all your modules are installed you finally end clamp the last one as you can see in the photo <coughs> some of the things that uh, we're working on with uh, this and have been looking at um, with the clamping is is we've been exploring all the different methods of clamping and what we have for the fast rack system there are some other methods out there that we've seen that um, could save us time but then there's other issues with them some are ones that have little little prongs on them that they say that they uh, they take care of the bonding for you instead of using the little weed washers what we found is uh, that they're not actually bonding the module to the rail they're bonding bonding the module to the clamp and that's it so uh, eventually those are going to get caught up on and they won't be allowed and you hopefully if you're using those you got to be really careful because one day you might get caught and um, they'll make you real small on the installation the other one we looked at too was the uh, little clip-in ones that uh, clip into the frame but we found that uh, stainless steel into the um, aluminum clip um, is not a good anchor point and over the years that, that is going to stress um, where ours with the stainless steel t-bolt connecting with a stainless steel nut um, gives you a better long-term secure fastener 
So we're continuing to explore it and we will come up with different methods. One thing that uh, we've recently added and um, it's actually been um, very well received with our customer base is uh, just flashings to cap off the uh, end. Um, so these little trim pieces as we call them, um, not to confuse them with the other flashing, but you can see on the end of the ray, so after you've cut off uh, any excess rail, um, then you can put on this trim piece to just close off the end of the ray and it looks really nice. Um, we'll continue to add benefits and features like this um, to Fast Track as we go forward, but this is a nice little addition, um, especially on some nice smaller arrays, makes it look nice and neat and, and cleaned up. Okay, so now I'm going to pass it back to Dan and he's going to go through um, some of those highlights that I mentioned as well and uh, how they can save you some time. Thank you very much, Ed. Um, so as Ed was mentioning, I'm going to look at some of the, some, I guess, reinstate some of the points that he mentioned earlier with regards to how this can save you money with your installations and your, your projects. Uh, knowing that there, there's a fixed cost in the systems or um, hard costs being panels, inverters, and wiring, there's also the soft costs, which are, um, your installation times, your travel times, um, uh, really just lab labor and time consumed, whether it's billable or non-billable. Um, the main goal of Fast Rack, obviously, is to decrease your racking and mounting times, which do take up a lion's share of um, of the uh, of, of the installation costs of solar systems. Um, ways to do this: the big ones. Big time savers that we have found. One base prep. That's a nice one. With the with the rails being uh, being dropped in, being so easy to install and set up on the ground. Um, sorry, pardon me for one second. Uh, pardon me. Uh, the the ability to to mount on your microinverters. Uh, do your wiring up on the roof, uh, sorry, before bringing the rails up to the roof uh, is going to be a huge time saver. The other big benefit is, of course, those larger spans. If we can get up to a 72-inch span, we can cut down the number of roof penetrations we need to do versus a 48-inch span by a third. third less penetrations is a third less material cost and a third less installation time for those parts. Um, so. In summary, with regards to the fast track system, um, because it's got the integrated bonding, there's no need to worry about bonding each of your individual panels um, and running your, your bare copper wire the, the whole length of your array. Um, the easy leveling system with regards to the L feet and the fast track rail um, having those integrated teeth um, allows you to level your system, increase the aesthetics of it, um, and just overall uh, a cleaner looking system. The greater spans, as we've touched on a couple of times now, uh, reducing the roof penetrations, saving you time and money. Uh, and of course, the T-bolts, which fantastic part of the of the system. It allows for the clamps and feet to be pre-installed, pre-assembled on the ground, brought up to the roof just for the installation purpose, as opposed to having to, with older systems where you'd have T-bolts out or uh, channel nuts, I would have to be dragged the whole length of the system to get to a middle part, a mid clamp. Uh, these you can just drop in where you need them to go. And again, a big time saver is laying out your system properly and um, with layout drawings provided, knowing where the middle of your array is versus the middle of your roof and um, and making <laughs> making life easier when you arrive on site. Um, with all of that, um, I bring to bring to an end of the the presentation portion of this webinar, and would like to open up to uh, any questions that we may have.
So the the only real question I got so far was whether someone can have a copy of this, and we will post this on the website, so that'll be available to you. And uh, you know, it usually takes us about a week to do so. Um, so give us a week, and then that should be made available to you, and then away we go. Um, this next question is about uh, cable management. Um, there is um, clip-in um, cable clips um, available. Um, also, um, clip-on tie wraps uh, available. Um, so you just have to contact your sales rep um, for those. Um, and then uh, we are continuing to look to um, further methods. One of the benefits, and it's actually just by fluke, is as you can see in this picture, is um, if you're ever using end phase on the fast track system, the end phase cable actually fits <laughs> right into the uh, the groove of the fast track, so it makes it nice and easy and neat to tuck that cable away as you go along. Um, no other questions that I can see. Um, but uh, thank you very much for attending. And if there's any any other questions that come up, you know, feel free to email us or give us a call. Thank you.